So I found another rabbit hole and uh, well, this is how it started. I began by hooking up my Omni mic just to kind of see where the speaker was with the uh, resistors that I changed on the floor there on the crossover to kind of just see if it's uh, relatively flat and if my listening and what I've enjoyed listening to has, you know, what that's done to that curve. So as you can see after my initial sign sweep, it's pretty good. Uh, there's a little bit of a dip in about the 300 and change hertz and then uh, also right around the 80 hertz I've got a dip in uh, the audio and this is how it started. I seen the two dips and I figured, you know, let's see if I can, you know, do something to smooth that out a little bit. Long story short, I'll give you the brief version. I think it's a phase issue at this point in time and I only found this out after hours of listening to those insane sign sweeps and uh, changing polarity, uh, changing crossover components, shortcutting crossover components. And uh, well, here's what I learned. I think that the bottom two drivers, the um, bottom box and this speaker right there, I think those two are kind of phase canceling or noise canceling each other because they're on the same phase. Uh, I don't think there's an easy solution to this. And uh, you know, the experts that are out there, I'm sure there's a lot of uh, people that check this out and go, this guy's an idiot. Uh, I am an idiot and I'm learning, so bear with me. But I think one of the phases is canceling at the sound. And the reason why I think that is if I change the polarity on either this speaker or the bottom one, that dip moves around into different parts of that spectrum. And I can see that it's actually canceling out uh, some of the audio from another one of the speakers. What this has led me to do is totally rethink how I set up that crossover. So as mentioned, I shortcut some of the components in that crossover and I found out I was kind of better off doing it. In one of the previous videos, I showed you how I made the whole crossover and I was really fine tuning it in XSIM to try to get that like super flat straight graph. And I think I'm just shooting myself in the foot. Like at the really high end when I'm measuring this, uh, you can kind of see the graph as well. After about 15,000 hertz, there's a bit of a dip and that dip was intentional. It was designed in the crossover, but it was to try to get a smoother line, not to get a consistent dip and that dip just keeps going. So if I bypass that component, which is the uh, final small capacitor in that crossover array, actually the last, uh, I think it's two capacitors, I actually end up getting a smoother response. So I'm kind of like, <clears throat> Am I wasting all this time in XM trying to really, you know, fine tune this? So what I'm going to end up doing with this information, I'm going to rethink the crossover and I'm going to make that instead of, right now it's a two-way kind of, with three speakers. Maybe I need to design this thing correctly. Put this thing on a different polarity and the woofer and the tweeter on the top put those two on the same polarity or on the same phase so this way i'm not noise cancelling some of the speaker audio what's really disturbing actually is if i go sit down in front of it and i'm listening to music and i connect either this speaker or this speaker i can actually hear that some of the audio off of the speaker uh, goes missing i can hear it when just one is connected but as soon as I connect both, you can tell one, one speaker picks up certain parts and I can't hear it on the other one. Now I mentioned in the past, I'm really enjoying how the speaker sounds and I, I'm not gonna take away from that. I do actually really enjoy the way this setup sounds, but I enjoy it the most when it's paired with the RTI A7. It's like kind of missing something. And I think that whole phase noise canceling thing I think that's it. I think that's what I'm missing. Uh, that I haven't taken that into account and I should have taken that into account when I added the third speaker. Instead build another crossover that cancels that out. 
If I look at the wiring on the RTI A7s, that's exactly what to do when they have the two mids together. There's one on a uh, positive goes to the negative and the other one the positive goes to the positive to put them on a different phase. What's really cool actually is when I incorporate the subwoofer in the corner, I don't know if you can see it in the video, you might be able to see a little bit of the box kind of in the back there. When I incorporate the subwoofer and I it has a phase switch on it, I can see it and I can very audibly hear it there as well. So I don't think I'm going down the wrong rabbit hole. If somebody knows better, please let me know, save me some time. But yeah, it started with that, just that little, those, those dips to try to flatten those dips out. And I found a, a whole nother rabbit hole of my lack of experience in designing this thing. What I'm going to be doing in the next video is I'm going to show you uh, what I'm going to do to redesign that crossover, order those components up, and then we'll see if that gets to the bottom of it. And hopefully I can make it better and hopefully I can fill in that, well, the dip is audible. I mean, th that's I think that's what I'm craving from the RTI A7s when I like listening to both of them together. The lows are better. The highs are better in my speaker versus this one, in my opinion. But there is something missing in the mids that the RTI A7s provide, and I want to fill that hole before, fill the hole, fix the problem, whatever, before I go and, you know, finalize what I'm going to do with that speaker and end up building the finished product. Next video, uh, that's what's going to be showing up. I'm going to take a look at that crossover, redesign it, and I'll show you guys what I'm doing there.